Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to my kitchen and I'm so happy that you decided to join us today. I have a very special guest, Cynthia Graubart from Atlanta is my special guest today and Cynthia, I'm so happy to have you with us. And you guys, she is the author of seven books. I've been busy. You have been busy. <laughs> She has also co-authored three books with Natalie Dupree. Yes. You're the former producer of her television show. For all of you that followed Natalie Dupree all these years, here's the brains behind the magic. <laughs> and the current project that she's working on that I absolutely love is Paul Childs, who's Julia's husband. Yes is his cocktail recipes. His cocktail recipes. It's such a find and we are having more fun working on that book. <laughs> I mean, oh my goodness. The testing is fantastic. Oh, I bet. <laughs> well, your newest work is hot, literally hot off the press. Indeed, indeed. This precious book, the definitive book of chicken is out as we speak, yes. just came out. And we're gonna prepare three recipes from this book today, correct? We are. We're gonna do the, um, the pear chutney uh, with chicken thighs, which either you can broil or grill. And then I've got a chicken liver pate, which has a nice little story oh. I'll have to tell you about. And, uh, and then we're gonna do uh, my spin on chicken divan, which is one of my Oh, we Comfort. all did that as newlyweds, Exactly, right? with a can of soup casserole kind exactly. of thing. And uh, and so I've taken a modern spin on it, and, oh, but it still this tastes homey. Oh, gosh, fun. Well, let's get started okay. on the chicken thigh recipe. All right. Well, uh, first you make a little chutney. and uh, You so did that ahead. I did that ahead, and I sautéed some minced shallots in some oil, and then I added uh, pears and vinegar, and some honey for some sweetness, and then I added um, a, a little bit of um, finely minced um, ginger. Oh, oh, wow. I love the ginger, the pear and the ginger together. Gosh, so fallish. And then you add the raisins. Okay. And then I'm going to make the marinade okay. for the chicken. All right. You want to I'm marinate stir, stir this, this about. for about at least an hour, and overnight is great if you're that okay. organized. Uh, I've got some pineapple juice here, and then I've got some soy sauce. Okay. And then I've got some chopped garlic. And you know, the marinade is really gonna tenderize that chicken. Now, oh, we are using thighs, and they are more tender by definition than... Right. Uh, and you want half of this in there, I correct? I sure do, and then I've got some vegetable oil there. Okay. And that's just gonna help emulsify the marinade. And you're just going to pulse that up? I am. And you've got the chicken thighs in a Ziploc bag. I do. you're going to pour this on. And I actually helped you out and we did a little bit last night, so I'm going to grab those out of Thank the fridge. Thank you. All right, so you just pulse that so it comes together as, as a marinade. And I'm going to see if I can successfully pour this into the Ziploc. Oh, good, and I get some help with that. Thank you. Oh, that just smells Doesn't it wonderful. Doesn't smell great? Okay, so let's look at these that we did. Okay. I hope, I hope you approve, Cynthia. Your book is so easy to follow, so I'm just gonna dump these out. And actually, from the preparation standpoint in the book, you refer to doing the cooking of this under the broiler. I and do. I ask you if for all the guys and those of us that really like to get outside this time of year, if we could do this on a grill. And absolutely. you said, absolutely. So you're gonna get some of those ready to go in the broiler, and I'm gonna put a couple of them on this gr hot griddle over here. And okay. these are boneless, by the way, too. Boneless. Tasty, flavorful. Woo! All right, well, we're gonna get these going and get these cooking. And when we come back from the break, you're gonna get started on that chicken liver pate. Absolutely. And y'all, the story is so cute. And then I'm gonna get started on a kind of a fallish flower arrangement to go with our final presentation. Terrific. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Welcome back. 
back, everybody. And if you're just joining me, we, I'm with my good friend, Cynthia Graubart, and she has put together a great new book on chicken. And we've gotten one recipe under our belt. We did a chicken thigh with a pear chutney. Mm -hmm. And I finished off on top of the grill because she said you can cook it two different ways. So we did some of them on the grill, a marinated chicken thigh. And then I flipped the ones that are in the broiler and they are in the warming drawer now. They smell fantastic. Good, so good. we're gonna get started on this chicken liver pate that she said you've got a great story that she's gonna share. And Cynthia, while you're doing that, I'm gonna move down to the end of the counter because I wanna put together a uh, fallish looking flower arrangement Terrific. for our end. So I'm going to let you, you kind of bring us up to date on that. All right, so I've been uh, sauteing these onions in some oil and they're softened and a little bit browned. And you can, if you want them really rich browned, you can cook them a little bit longer. I'm going to add these to my food processor here. Food processor's coming in very handy today. <laughs> it sure has. <laughs> And then I have cooked uh, chicken livers in some port, Ugh. and I've browned those nicely. And now I'm gonna add these into the food processor as well. Well, and you know, the, um, the Fresh Market always has those chicken livers, and they're so fresh and, you know, just really great. And so I'd recommend popping in over there to pick those up. And I want people to know how easy this is to do. Uh, I'm going to add two hard boiled eggs into the food processor. And then I've got some chicken fat. Now you can buy chicken fat in a jar and sometimes it's labeled as schmaltz. Um, and you can Whoa. also uh, use duck fat if you like, or you can also render your own chicken fat. And then I've got some salt and some pepper here. And I'm gonna whir this together. Now, my husband, his mother used to make this. And this is her and recipe. This is a story, this is so cute. And she would wait um, for her husband to come home. Uh, they lived near Fort Tryon Park. And he would come out of the 190th Street subway station. And she could peek out the window and see oh. if he was coming. And as soon as she saw him, she started getting the appetizers ready. Uh. The Yiddish word is Vorspice and that's what means appetizer. And she would have that waiting when he walked in the door. Oh man, and I bet, every night. I bet some of those stories could work with what you're doing with Paul Childs too. Oh, those absolutely. Those cocktail and the cocktail hour. You know, we have all have these rituals around food um, that are so wonderful. Well, and you know, chicken pate, chicken liver pate is kind of taken on a new life of its own because charcuterie, charcuterie is so popular right now that a lot of young people are trying it that might have, you know, turned their nose up at that right. ahead. Um, one of the things I want to point out about what I'm doing down here is that you know, flowers don't have to all be flowers. You know, people get all caught up on what's blooming in your yard. And this is literally greenery that I'm just gonna pop in a few flowers because this time of the year, you don't have that much. But um, you know, if you don't have pretty greenery, I bet your neighbor does. <laughs> <laughs> and my neighbor always has pretty greenery if they happen to be watching right now. Okay, so we're gonna make these into little small containers. Yes, what you wanna do is make sure whatever container you use, you can use a, um, a clear glass bowl as a mold or a traditional pate mold or you can use these mini loaf um, molds. You just want to be sure that you oil it or use a mm -hmm. cooking spray on right. it to aid in its coming out. And oh, I've this, got to walk over and look at this. Oh, and it's actually kind of chunky now too. I didn't go all the way to make right. this particular one extremely smooth. Oh, I love that. Well, she's going to get all of this um, into the little pans and it's just smelling wonderful. And when we come back from the break, we're going to get started on that old fashioned. If you were a newlywed, when you and I were, you had to make chicken divan if you were having a dinner party. That's right. So she's put a new fashion twist on this recipe. So come back with us in just a few minutes. Oh, that just works wonderful. Vera's Corner is brought to you by Georgia Bank and Trust and Southern Bank and Trust. Okay, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, you know, poached eggs are my absolute favorite for brunches, but it's really hard to do when you're doing for a crowd. So today I'm gonna to teach you how to poach a dozen eggs all at one time. Fill each of 12 muffin cups with a tablespoon of water. 
Crack an egg into a measuring cup. And to avoid spills, you want to position the egg to hit the side of the muffin cup. Put into a 350 degree oven and bake for eight minutes and check. If the whites aren't set, bake for another two minutes and then remove promptly with a spoon. I recommend serving it with greens and fresh vegetables or even on a piece of toast. Season and enjoy. Welcome back, everybody. We are having the best time Absolutely. today with this book. And you know, it's so funny, Cynthia said, um, I said, that is the cutest picture of that chicken on there. And she said, well, he's got a great agent. And I mean, I fell for it. I was like, what? I need the same agent. But we are making the best recipes out of this book today. The pâtés in the refrigerator, it just looked great, smelled great. I kind of licked the spoon. It's going to be delicious. And now we're starting on the old school favorite, you know, the chicken divan right. as newlyweds back in the day. You had to know how to make that if you were having a dinner party. We've kind of gone back in time with the chicken liver pate because it's kind of been reinvented with the charcuterie tray. Absolutely. You know, Popping so all up you everywhere. Young people out there, you don't know what you're missing if you ha if you don't try this. And Cynthia has been nice enough to share these recipes. Not only are they in the book, her book, but they'll be on our website at verivera.com. So tell us what you did while we were away uh, right. with the sauce. I melted some butter and added some flour. Okay. And I cooked that for about a minute so that the flour would start to cook. You don't want it to taste pasty. Right. And then I added some chicken stock. And now I'm gonna add some milk. Okay. And this is our sauce that will go with the chicken. Now I have to tell you, I grew up on chicken divan. My mother was the can of soup casserole queen of I know it. every oh. suburb I ever lived in growing up. Uh, bless her heart, as we say. Uh, and of course, it's one of my comfort foods because that's what I grew mm -hmm. up with. But I had to move away from the can of condensed right, soup. Right. So I'm just made really essentially a white sauce oh, here. That's beautiful. Isn't that nice? That's a really nice texture. Well, and then you gave me a project while we were away during the break, and I got the chicken breast boiled and ready to be cut up. I'm Great. Cut those into bite-sized pieces. And then I learned something from you today, Cynthia, about this toast because when we were experimenting with your recipes, I said, well, you know, just butter the bread and then put it under the broiler. Right. And so well, no, she said to toast it first. And it's, you said your mom always did it that way, but if you toast the bread first and then butter it, it stays crisp. It stays, it does. It's it, just it fantastic. It really is a nice way to do it. Uh, so while you're working on that, I'm gonna be getting the chicken cut up. Okay, and I'm gonna continue with the sauce. I'm gonna add some dry sherry, and I'm gonna add some dry mustard. I am a huge dry mustard fan, and as it turns out, you know Sherry Castle. Right, you, right. The uh, cookbook author, I, well, she's a dear friend, and she was over one night when I was testing this recipe, and we discovered that we're both really huge dry mustard fans. Well, I was uh, gonna say, we had port in the last recipe, and Sherry in this one, so maybe y'all were. We're doing, we're, we're, we're having doing a little of well, that too. Mm -hmm. All right, I have a little pinch of nutmeg. <laughs> you could also change this recipe up with a couple of tablespoons of curry. That's a nice variation. I love the nutmeg. That's, that's one of the things I really liked about it. And then I've got some salt and pepper. And our sauce now is good to go. And I'm gonna put a little bit here in the bottom of my casserole dish. And this is one of those recipes where you wanna make sure you're oiling or spraying right. your casserole dish so that it won't stick to the bottom of the pan. And then I'm gonna add half my broccoli here in a layer. Now the broccoli I just steamed just so it would be a little more tender. Right. And then I've got some grated cheddar cheese that I'm gonna put in here. And, and then you need this chicken. And then so I need that chicken. I've got ready for you You've got right a layer there. for me there. I've got Thank a layer you. for you. And you know, these chicken breasts, the Fresh Market always has on Tuesday on sale for $2.99. So, I mean, honestly, you gotta get there early because the line starts forming, but it's a, a great deal on Tuesdays at Fresh Market. Great, and then I'm gonna add another layer of sauce. Oh, look sauce. at that sauce. 
This well, is, and this is a great, and this recipe freezes really well. It freezes well. You know, it's a nice thing to take to somebody mm -hmm. when, uh, when they need a meal and it's easy to put together. And I'm gonna finish off my next layer here with the broccoli and the cheddar and the rest of that chicken, yes, Vera. Yes, yes, get it done, get it done. Perfect. Oh, and then I'm going to cut this toast. And then the thing about it, you know, you have all the casseroles that have the crushed crackers or, um, you know, the Ritz crackers or whatever on the top or the um, panko breadcrumbs. And this is so neat because it's pieces of toast, so it has a little quaintness about it. It really does. It really has a homey feel. Now, I have uh, finished off with the layer of Okay, so I'm going to give you sauce. some of these. And while we finish putting this together, when we come back from the break, we're going to lay everything out. We're going to have a little tasting session. Oh, good, and then good, I'm going to good. talk to you about the flower arrangement that I got finished. So come back with us in just a few minutes. I'm just going to sprinkle this with some Parmesan cheese before Perfect. we put it in the oven. Okay. okay. Welcome back everybody and Cynthia it just looks fantastic. I can't wait to taste and you know I was busy too working on some flowers. Do you like to do flowers? I do, I do. Well I love this time of year because greenery is just really about the only thing that you can go with and so my recommendations for doing this at home is to start with all of your greenery and get that really making the, the focus point of your arrangement because you know, I picked up some Gerber daisies just to pop in for color, but with the apples that I just used a floral pick to go in, that's a pop of color right there. And then this time of year, you've also got berries. Nandina's got berries, Holly's have berries, but there's this crazy vine that I hate in the summer that I go out there when I was picking greenery, and now it's got berries on it. So I almost did kind of a three-dimensional thing there, but this will last for quite a while, and I also have a tip about putting a tablespoon of Clorox in the water mm -hmm. and that keeps the bacteria down. So this is a, a great focal point for this fantastic you looking. You make it look so easy. <laughs> Maybe I could even do it. Oh, I know you could. <laughs> well, let's get started on what we've got here because I cannot wait to dive in. We did both grilled and broiled chicken thighs. I serve it on a bed of rice. Any kind of rice right. will do. And of course you've reserved half that chutney so you can serve that along with the with the dish. And then our pate really oh. came out nicely. And you know back to this chicken you've got the ones that you did grilled and then the ones in the broiler so it just either one Oh my goodness, I'm gonna try that in okay. just a minute. But this is, and you know, of course the Cars crackers were the way to go with that as well. And then tell us about this chicken divan. It was bubbling hot when it, it came out of the it oven. It looked glorious coming out of the oven, and of course it smells divine. Oh. And it's real comfort food. Um, a, a dish that I love, and I love making it for other people. Oh. Uh, it's nice when a family's in need and you can bring them something that tastes so good, like this casserole. Well, and you know, all of the recipes are available on our website at verivera.com, mm -hmm. but our your cookbook is also going to be available on our website. This is something new for us, so we're Thank excited you. that you're the inaugural opportunity for us to be selling our guest cookbooks from our site. Wonderful. And then, of course, Cynthia, all her social media, she's on every platform, so we've got her information on the screen if you want to be in touch with her for any, any reason. But you know, these chicken dishes, it just shows you through that cookbook that a whole book can be written about all of the different things that you can do with chicken, whether it's a main dish, whether it's an appetizer, just a lot of different things. But I've just got to jump into this real quick and see. <laughs> it just takes you back in time. Well, Cynthia, I certainly want to thank you for joining us today. And for those of you that are not familiar with her, like I said, please go to her sites and look and see everything that she's got going on, where she's going to be traveling with the book. And you know, on the Very Vera Show, I always say, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. And obviously, I'm tasting some really <laughs> good food right now, so I've made a great choice there. But I hope you'll come back and join me again I would love on the to. show. Love and I to. want all of you to come back and join me as well. And I'm going to dive in and enjoy some of this delicious food. Thank you for having me. Okay, come back with us again next week.
Thank you.